Okay, this is about the fifth time I tried to make this video. I keep either getting interrupted or... Uh, let me not get into it. Alright, let's just get started. The faster we do this, the better. So, uh, as uh, the professor said, uh, this was a problem that was done and we're just going to prove it real fast. Prove that the limit of theta as it goes to zero is equal to one. Alright, so, um, as I think he said in class, this is a visual problem and maybe not something you would do ordinarily to solve a problem, but uh, this is how you solve it. So we have right now a unit circle and it of course uh, has a radius right and it, the radius is sort of arbitrary. Most people put in a value of 1 into the radius for the unit circle. That's sort of a standard. It doesn't have to be. And I'm just only going to concentrate on the um, first quadrant right here at an, you know, some I know Khan Academy uh, Sal did these two quadrants but but I don't feel it's that relevant so let's start drawing this so here let's take a point line and draw a small triangle and uh, actually let me do this in another color uh, this blue will be fine All right. so here we have a triangle and actually I want to dot this on the way down because we're going to see that this is part of a bigger triangle so we have this triangle right and there's a uh, we, we have to note that there's an arc here that we're going to have to keep track of basically and let me uh, draw the bigger triangle now so from this point up okay so why did I just do this? Well, basically, uh, this was <laughs> what was done in class uh, to solve the problem. But um, this sine of theta uh, divided by theta, we can find, um, we can basically use the squeeze theorem to find this, w what exactly it is, or to prove that the limit of this is, limit as it goes to zero is equal to one. So, basically the arc is going to sort of represent that and, and actually let, let's just work with it as we go along you, you'll see what I mean so uh, before anything else let's start labeling our points we have A here this will be B this will be C this will be oh I'm sorry I have to do this again uh, the origin point here we're going to make it O I'm sorry, because I've already done this basically previously and uh, want to work with the model that I already have. So A, B, C, and this point here is going to be D. Alright, so this is a representation of what I just drew. Origin O, uh, we have A, we have B, we have C, we have D. And uh, yeah, important thing to note, this is a right triangle, of course, from A to D. And this is a right triangle here. From B, well, OAD is a right angle, and OBC is a right angle. Just smash the mosquito. Okay. And of course, the radius is R, and that's the same from here to here. That's R. So we're going to take this, we're going to focus on the first quadrant, as you can see in the top right hand corner, and we're going to split it into, well, not split it, but uh, copy it three times over. Alright, so I'm going to show you how we're going to basically um, find the area. Well, what areas we're specifically go going to find. We're going to find this area here of the inner triangle, right? This inner area. And then we're going to find the area here of this arc, or this pie, really. Think, think of a pumpkin pie and you're, you're, you're cutting out a piece. So going to find that area. going to find this area of this big uh, triangle here, the overall big triangle. And there we go. Pretty much done. Alright, so now let's start uh, calculating this. So the, the formula to find any triangle, uh, that's a horrible traceover, but the, the formula to find any triangle is what? 1 half times base, right? 
times height. So we can use that formula for both of these. A and one important thing to note uh, is that this inner triangle, this pi, and uh, this bigger triangle, they're sort of all proportional to each other in the sense that this smaller triangle is always going to be less than this piece of the pie and I hope you see that if you see the bluish area this there's more bluish area here and this bigger triangle has more area than the both of them of course because both of those pieces for example can fit inside the big triangle and this small triangle can fit inside the pie that's the idea so for now uh, let's not complicate things too much so one so back to this big triangle one half times base times height and um, we're going to realize, well, let's make this base 1, height 1, and this base 2, height 2, because they're two different triangles. I just want to be a bit verbose uh, when calculating this. So, uh, let's calculate the base of this first triangle. And th the factors that we're going to focus on using is theta, right? And we're going to also focus on using um, this r radius which would normally be in a unit circle 1, for example. Alright, so, what's this base? Right, well we know it's line OA, right, which is equal to base 1. We don't know what OA is, but in reference to theta and R, we can find, um, we can figure it out. So, this, we can consider the adjacent side of theta, right? adjacent side, uh, adjacent 1, I, I just want to keep all of this 1, 1, 1 over here. So, to find the adjacent side, uh, we can use cosine from our Sokoa So, we're going to have cosine of theta is equal to, what is it, adjacent, and the specific adjacent side we're talking about is adjacent 1, right? over the hypotenuse. That's the standard, right? And the hypotenuse, I'm not going to put any little number by it because it's uh, a constant. Throughout all of these, all the hypotenuses um, are the same. So, we have cosine, adjacent, hypotenuse. Now, let's bring the hypotenuse. We're going to take this hypotenuse and take it to the other side. Basically, we multiply both sides of this equation by hypotenuse, which we can replace hypotenuse, really, to simplify things with r. So, r times cosine of theta is equal to adjacent 1. Alright, so I hope you're keeping up. So basically, now we know what adjacent 1 is. We just figured it out. Let me highlight it to uh, further prove the point. So we have the radius or hypotenuse times cosine theta is equal to adjacent 1. Adjacent 1 is here, which is equal to the base, which is here. So now we can use the principle of sub substitution. Excuse me. So, one half times r times cosine of theta. All right. Now, what about uh, dh? Dh here is for height, right? So that's height, and the height is basically the opposite, right? The opposite side of theta, opposite one. I want to put there. So, uh, and let me erase this up here, so we have now more room to work. Okay, now that that's clear, so something that involves opposite and hypotenuse, because we're using uh, this R here, remember, is we can use, let's see, cosine, correct? I believe it's cosine. No, sine. I'm sorry. I had a brain tease. Okay. So sine of theta is equal to opposite 1. 
right? Let's keep track of uh, the opposites that we have because we have three on this screen. And the hypotenuse.